last excerpt. It will be excerpt number 27. probably how this village Catalani could sing like. I think it's it's pretty authentic way of singing that it's very similar to shouting almost. And I think it could have been uh, this sort of singing, but whether it was this one or a different technique, we don't know. It will always be a mystery to us. So uh, slightly to uh, head towards the end and uh, to start the concert, I would like to underline that except this folk tradition that is the base of every mazurka. Of course, Chopin heard a lot of mazurkas that were already published for um, piano in a stylized form, for example, by Maria Szymanowska and many other contemporaries. And mazurka has been incorporated also to other musical forms, uh, like, for example, in his Polonaise of his 44, the middle part of it is a mazurka. Also, in other folk, ideas were incorporated by Chopin into his fantasy on Polish airs, although, remember that most of the tunes there are not folk-based, they are actually commonly known tunes, but not folk-based. But there is one folk uh, subject, the last one. And Krakowiak, another Polish dance, also August 14 for piano and the orchestra. And many of Chopin's songs are in a form of mazurkas or folk influenced uh, forms. And a um, very important thing is that Chopin probably never quoted a tune he heard. Although we can only assume, we cannot be 100% sure since we were not there with him, but what he took from what you heard. Our basic principles. So the meter, the rhythmical structure, the structure of phrasing and embellishments, variants, such elements, but everything else that you will hear tonight is his own musical language. And it's a huge story to tell actually about uh, every mazurka uh, because the style has evolved so much. You will hear tonight and tomorrow. Mazurkas you will hear tonight are early ones. 
So you can actually distinguish the style, whether they were written as Kuyabek, Mazur, or Oberek. Tomorrow with the pieces, you will have completely, actually, different tasks while listening, but we will, we will talk about it tomorrow. Today, you will hear a lot of melancholy of Kuyabek, a lot of dignity of Mazur, and this crazy energy of Oberek in some of them as well. And it will be pretty obvious to distinguish these features. Tomorrow, you will hear musical poems where these dances only echo. And I think we will talk about mazurkas a little bit more tomorrow. The last thing I'm going to mention is that very often we look at his mazurkas as nationally influenced pieces because they were based on Polish folk art and it was an expression of Chopin longing for his homeland. And I'm sure in many ways it was. I can understand it this way as well, since living your homeland is something very hard, especially if you don't have a way back. We can see that a lot with Ukrainian musicians that we meet nowadays who actually um, share this uh, experience. But I think, to be honest, I would look at them more from a perspective of going back in time to your childhood. To be honest, since this is our most important fundamental part of our lives, very often very formative. Uh, we tend to go back to places, to memories, to people. And he was a simple human being. I think I would never look at them from a nationalistic or national point of view. To me, they are the most personal pieces he ever wrote, and they were not attached to a geographical region. They were an expression of natural human longing and trying to recall places and memories. And let's, let's look at them as such. And before I start the concert, I would love to tell you about the initiative um, Help Musicians Ukraine, uh, because I'm actually one of the founders of this association. And we are helping musicians who are actually are escaping uh, this horror of war. And very often they come to Poland where I live at the moment. And with my group, we help to find safe places for them. We help them with work continuation, with school continuation in Europe, because this is an international group. The main founder of uh, this group comes from Great Britain and lives in Warsaw, is my friend Danai Beleni. And we both uh, try to take care of as many musicians as possible, and we have a large group of volunteers working with us at the moment. But if any of you would be interested either in supporting our association, our group of volunteers, by donating money to our actions, or supporting directly our Ukrainian musicians that are you know, under our care, by either hosting them, or if you're a director of some music institution, providing them with work opportunities or study continuation, then we will be very happy to hear from you. And there are some flyers available up, yeah, over there where you can read some important information and get contact details. Thank you so much. A little break to air the room and we start the concert. 